The aim of this experiment is to see if I can replicate an ancient bone flute that will produce sound. I based my aim on the question, replicate some ancient artifacts and detail the processes, waste products, wear patterns or anything else relevant to the archaeology that result. This experiment should be helpful to archaeological research on ancient bone flutes because it will help us understand the manufacturing process as well as being able to identify related discarded material and use wear on tools. The worldwide archaeological record has produced many different examples of a bone flute and archaeologists have been studying these early musical instruments for over a hundred years. Archaeologists have determined that a 40,000 year old vulture bone artifact is the oldest known musical instrument. The flute was found in a cave in Germany and would have been made using only stone tools. These findings have allowed experts to safely state that bone flutes are the earliest type of musical instrument used by modern humans. Aside from Europe, there has been a great deal of bone flute material excavated from Asia. Most of the replication that seem to, seems to have been done is reconstruction work so that the instrument can be played to gain a better understanding of early musical culture. For example, a Swedish study was undertaken by the Music Museum in Stockholm, which gathered information on all types of flutes in the region before replicating each one and testing their performance potentials. This experiment was not a novel experiment, and in fact bone flutes have been replicated many, many times before. The reason I chose to do this experiment was because as a flute player myself, I wanted to see if I could create this object and then play it. I have always been fascinated with bone flutes and even did a bit of study on them in high school. A bone flute also seemed achievable to make with the skills I have picked up over the course of the semester. So while this mostly was a piece of assessment, it was also a personal achievement for me that I have wanted to accomplish for a while now. While enabling us to understand how the artifacts would have been manufactured, this experiment will also allow us to get a glimpse of the type of music that was being played as far back as the Neanderthals. While it is quite easy to distinguish a bone flute in the archaeological record, this experiment will give us a better understanding of the traces of bone flute manufacture that are left behind. The material I used was a lamb femur as it was cheap and readily available. Even though bone flutes have been made out of many different types of bone, my research on the archaeological evidence proved that most favoured bird bones because of their thinness and workability. My first step was to remove all the parts of the bone that I didn't want. I boiled the bones for approximately 5 hours before soaking them in the same pot overnight. I was then able to remove any leftover flesh from the bones more easily. To make a tube, I then had to cut both ends of the femur off. This was done using a very sharp, unretached flake I obtained in a practical during the semester. Here is a short video of me using the flake on the bone. Once the ends had been cut off, I removed the soft marrow as well as filing the hardened marrow away with a piece of antler that was acquired during the semester. To form a mouthpiece, I sawed two slightly angled lines a centimetre apart, as well as one at the base to make a sort of trapezoid shape. I then filed this down using both the antler and an abrasive rock I found in the garden. To make the finger holes, I also used the unretouched flake, as the ends were quite pointy and sharp. To save time, however, once I got in a few millimetres into the bone on all three holes, I used an electric drill to finish off and get through the bone. 
I did this because of time restraints, but it is possible to create finger holes using a sort of stone drill. Lastly, I used another abrasive rock to file down the holes to make them a little bit bigger. My result was that I did manage to make a bone flute that produces sound. Here is a recording of me playing the flute, but be wary of the sound, it's quite shrill. other recordings on bone flutes like this one. The general whistling sort of sound is similar to the sound I produced. The difference is the range of notes is much greater with the other recording. This could be because the player's technical playing skills are better than mine, and that there were more finger holes on the instrument. As I mostly used the unretouched flake to manufacture the flute, there was a great deal of wear on this tool. The sharp sawing side I used was especially damaged. You can see the sawing motion has caused bits of stone to chip off all along the sharp edge. Because I did manage to make a working bone flute, my aim was achieved. Along the way though, I also managed to track the stages of use wear on the tools. I had expected the flake to be unusable after I had finished the manufacturing process as I was quite rough in my use of it. The end result though was that while there was damage, especially to the sharp blade edge, it was still in decent enough condition to still work, but just less efficiently. The implications of this experiment is that we now have a better understanding of the process of bone flute making, how the process affects the tools used, and what is left behind. The replication also allows us to catch a glimpse of what musical culture was like as far back as 40,000 years ago. In terms of what is left behind in the archaeological record, all aspects of this experiment would leave some sort of durable evidence. The artifact itself would be able to last thousands of years, however its condition would be affected by the deposition environment. The same situation would apply to the antler point that I used. The stone flake and the use wear would definitely preserve, preserve quite well in the archaeological record. The only post-depositional damage that could occur is breakage or shattering. Other evidence that may be durable in the archaeological record is the bone powder residue left on the abrasive rocks when filing down the finger holes and mouthpiece. In conclusion, yes the experiment was successful as I managed to produce a sound with the flute that I made. I was also able to clearly identify use wear on the stone blade used and bone residue on the other tools I was using. Along with getting a better understanding of the types of discarded material associated with manufacturing bone flutes. In general, my replication went well and much better than I expected it to. However, if I were to perform this experiment again, I would change a few things. First of all, I would allow for more time in the manufacturing process so that I would not have to use modern tools to speed up the process. I would also like to use a longer bone next time so that more finger holes could be included and therefore I could play an actual song instead of just two notes. So, through this experiment I have found that it is quite easy to replicate a working bone flute and its manufacturing process leaves evidence of use wear and residues on tools that would be fairly distinguishable within the archaeological record. <laughs>